Companies change their logos every now and then. It's a way for them to stay hip, you know, to evolve with the times, to show everyone that they're still cool. But a lot of the time, these changes suck, and they piss me off way more than they should. So today I'm gonna pretend like I know what I'm talking about and tell you why most company logos suck now. I'm gonna try and break this video up into a bunch of different segments, but I guarantee I'm gonna fly off the rails because that's just how I work. Let's talk about Google. When Google changed their logo from this clean serif font to this, it was the end of the world. Everybody flipped out, myself included, because this just looked childish. Even use some animation with kids drawing the logo in chalk to reveal it. Like, it felt like they thought I was stupid. But then I realized something. I am stupid. You wanna find me, what do you do? You search my name on Google, this video pops up. You click on it and you watch it on Google. You keep watching until Google reminds you you gotta go to work, so you use Google to get there, and then you check Google all day. This video was written in Google. Like, Google does everything. So this logo, it works. It's grown on me. And if their whole mantra is making shit simple for you, this redesign did exactly what it was supposed to do. But when they unveiled it in 2015, it started one of the worst trends in modern logo design. The oversimplification of everything in the entire fucking world. Oversimplification is all too common when companies try to reimagine their brand for a digital age. You got Pringles, who took a way too much off the top of their guy. <laughs> I don't even know what the fuck happened to him. Firefox is just an orange circle now. And Internet Explorer's logo evolution looks like a deathbed portrait. These brands have butchered what made them so unique in the first place because they needed to be hip and modern. But Pringles literally sells potato chips, so it's not really adding up in my head. Pizza Hut's logo has more or less been the same for decades. In 2014, they got rid of that yellow line for whatever reason, and then not too long after that, they changed it to this, a blander, uglier version of what they already had. The pizza chain, famously known for the red roof over the building, they ditched the red roof, and they got lost in the sauce, literally, until they changed their logo back to the one they had used in the 60s. Boom, a beautiful logo, Back from the dead, a change that made most Americans think of a time when airports didn't suck and when Domino's couldn't out Pizza the Hut. I love this logo. I, I love it. It is clean. It manages to look retro and modern at the same time. No shitty little 3D graphics. It's flat. It's clean. And it works. And Burger King did it too. Look at this. The classic pre-9-11 version of the Burger King logo came back with a few minor tweaks, and I love it. I will never, never step foot in a Burger King for as long as I live, but the logo's good. I'll give them that. This trend works. And actually, I just came up with a list of companies whose logos need to go back to. Radio Shack. This one is a no-brainer to me. These guys have been in the shitter for decades. You might as well remind people of a time when they weren't. It's a fun, vibey logo that should make a comeback once they stop fucking with crypto. Cartoon Network should bring back the classic checkerboard in instead of this boring old CN they've been using since 2010. I get that it's still faithful to the original, but man, this one is so much cooler. And maybe while you guys are making changes, you can put on any other show than Teen Titans Go. Go, Daddy. Bring back Daddy, please. Also, bring back the 2013 Super Bowl commercial you guys put out. I love that. Nokia should strongly consider bringing back the fish. I don't know what they were doing back then in 1865, but he needs to come back. Bring the fish back. Hashtag bring back the fish Nokia. I think Apple should bring back their old rainbow logo because not only does it look better, but also they'll be covered in June. Microsoft should change their logo back to this one because while I associate their new one with death and decay, when I see this one, I feel like a kid again who's about to load up Backyard Baseball 2003 and have a great time. And finally, Taco Bell. I don't know what any of you guys were thinking when you made this one, but it is absolutely positively just not working. Going back to any of Taco Bell's previous logos would be a good move. <laughs> It'd be a win in my book. It's funny because Taco Bell and Pizza Hut are actually owned by the same company, so this is something that could actually happen. Taco Bell, if you listen to me, I think the 1992 one is your ticket to win it. Clean it up a little bit, you got yourself a brilliant logo. This sounds like the introductory portion of- Are you fucking drinking of, cum? What is that? <laughs> what are you talking what about? What the fuck what are you, are you drinking? About? Holy shit, it's Ludwig! Hey, what's going on, man? Dude, is that cum on your mouth? What the fuck? What are you talking about? <laughs> We're not making the drink. It doesn't even look like cum. It doesn't make any sense. Put that up to the camera. What the fuck is that? What's wrong with this? It literally looks like cum. It's not supposed to be cum. Come ask. That 
is right, boys. My all-new GamerSubs flavor, Titty Milk, is finally, finally here. And it is dropping on the 28th. This is it. This is all I've ever wanted, and it's finally fucking here. It doesn't look remotely like cum like semen or anything. Teddy Milk is the ultimate energy drink on the market. It's a great tasting twist on blue raspberry that'll leave you feeling alert and refreshed all day long. Because that's what Gamer Subs is all about. Zero calories, zero sugar, no headaches, no blood sugar spikes, and most importantly, no crash. Teddy Milk is engineered to keep you going without making you feel like shit, unlike every other energy drink. And let's be real, we've had enough big crashes in our lifetime. I bought Gamer Subs back in May because I knew it was special. Because I knew it had potential. Because I knew we could make a drink look like cum and get away with it. It's chock full of organic caffeine, vitamins, minerals, and electrolytes. It's a fraction of the cost of other energy drinks, and it tastes better than literally all of them. I am so excited for you guys to try my Teddy Milk. So set a reminder because this stuff drops on October 28th. Also, if you're a small streamer and you hate the taste of water, there's also a caffeine-free version for you. So guys, you can click the link in the description or go to gamersubs.gg slash Titty Milk to get some Titty Milk for yourself. Use code SLAT for 10% off and drink up. A big reason I think retro logos are starting to make a comeback these days is because I think this era of modernizing everything kind of resulted in a lack of identity for a lot of brands. Every company logo today uses the exact same font, the exact same thickness, the exact same font spacing, and a lot of the time you just wind up losing all sense of who you are and where you came from. Take Intel, for example. Intel decided to ditch that classic swooping circle that encompassed their entire logo since 2005. They changed the lettering to the most cookie cutter, generic tech company ass font they could find and decided that the only thing that should set their brand apart from all the other manufacturers was a tiny blue square. They even got rid of the chime. You know, the da 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 da, they changed that shit. And I don't even think you heard the new one because no one cares anymore. They made that change and then boom, the stock price plummeted. Coincidence? Yes. But that swoop was Intel. And this border, you probably know what that is too. Heinz, right? Heinz unveiled the brand refresh a few years ago that I am in love with. It unified all their products under that familiar keystone. It used to be an inconsistent mess of different shapes and sizes and fonts, and now it's just Heinz. Imagine if they got rid of that. Imagine if they got rid of the arch in the text, like it, this is just an inseparable part of the brand identity. And now imagine Kraft completely removing all the defining characteristics of the brand in one fell swoop. The strong blue text and that quintessential red border around it Gone like that. And then imagine them realizing their mistake and changing it right back. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. You don't have to reinvent the wheel every single time, especially if the wheel is fucking rolling. It's always funny when a billion dollar company decides to spend a fuck ton of money on a redesign only for it to be a complete and utter failure. Take Tropicana, for instance. Back in 2009, they tried changing the packaging of their orange juice to this in a change that cost $35 million and resulted in a 20% drop in orange juice sales. Who the fuck thought this was a good idea? The Tropicana packaging was like second only to Coke in terms of recognition. The orange, we're destroying it, that's genius. This shit was Kellogg's and this shit was Malto Meal, okay? The new design was ugly, it was cheap looking, and it was unnecessary. And it's no surprise that they changed everything back exactly the way it was in under two months. Because at the end of the day, that fucking orange with the straw in it is Tropicana. And they're still using that logo today. Again, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Reebok tried to reinvent the wheel in 2014, completely abandoning the brand mark that made them famous. And they switched it to a triangle. A triangle. Yeah, that didn't last long. Papa John's had the name of the restaurant in that arched green border, and they got rid of the border. And then they got rid of the apostrophe, canonically revealing that there are multiple Johns. And one time, Vegemite tried changing its name to iSnack 2.0. I'm not kidding. I don't know what kind of Walter Hartwell White 308 Negra Royal Lane Albuquerque New Mexico type shit these guys were smoking, but get me some of that right now. There's ways to build on the legacy of company branding without completely trashing it. Take Android, for example. Android thinned down their logo, they cut the fat, and they kept the most important part, that little funny green man. Don't get me wrong, the font is cliche as fuck, everybody uses it, but at least my little Grimblow's still there. This one's gonna be controversial, but Warner Brothers actually had one of my favorite logo 
redesigns in recent memory. The old logo was on his deathbed. You cannot refute that. I don't care. That thing was hooked up to five fucking ventilators, bro. They thinned it down. They preserved the famous shape of the emblem, and they still gave it room to breathe and adapt. This is good. It's good. I'm sorry. It's good. Gap, on the other hand, holy shit. This is what you don't do. All right, I've talked about this one before because it cost them $100 million to make this change and they change it back after six days. But oh my God, you took a perfectly reputable logo from a household name in affordable clothing, an American staple, and you turned it into a douchebag, Silicon Valley, Austin, Texas, software as a service startup company. Let me put this logo next to a couple other tech ones and you tell me which one makes clothing with Kanye West. This shit is what pisses me off the most. You know, everyone wants to look modern and hip and like the next big thing in whatever field they're doing. And it's so funny to me that in this pursuit to stand out and set themselves apart from everything else, everyone just winds up fitting right in. And now it is time to talk about what I consider to be the biggest sin humans have ever committed. <sighs> this is going to take a lot of strength for me to say without frankly stopping the recording. There's a saying in this world, and the saying goes that hard times create strong men. And that strong men create good times. And that good times create weak men. And that weak men create this. I can hardly express to you in words how much I hate this. I'm trying very hard not to lose my composure. I would drag my nutsack across a lit Weber Genesis if it meant I didn't have to see one of these gangly motherfuckers again. But I do have to see them again. Because every fucking company and their mother decided that this is the art style they're gonna use from now on. You wanna clock in and talk with your coworkers? You wanna plan out your next creative endeavor? You wanna find a partner to share the rest of your life with? You wanna buy a shit ton of guns and scratch off the serial numbers? Welcome to Allegria, the art style Facebook developed in 2017 that uses flat, simple, scalable shapes and makes me wanna fucking die. At its core, this art style was made to be relatable and universal. All the characters are happy. They're in motion and they're all blue and they're orange and they have these big ass feet and non-proportional bodies that no one ever feels left out. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. This is the bottom of the barrel. It does not get worse than this. If you go to any website and you see these happy-go-lucky fuckers plastered across the page, you can guarantee yourself that the product will be as shitty and uninspired as the art on the page. Think about it. This is what they used to tell you why they stand out from the bunch, why they're industry disrupting, and they decided to use this. I know you've seen this shit. It is so deeply ironic to me that an art style made specifically for the purpose of relatability has evolved into one of the most unrelatable, inchoate messes of mass-produced shapes. How the fuck is anybody supposed to relate to this? No one can live like this. You will die if you look like this. Even more insulting is the constant state of joy that all these people are in. They're so happy. Our world is so happy. There's nothing ever wrong. We just need to focus on what makes us happy and buy the product. Companies make me happy with their products. And when I use them, my head begins to shrink to the size of a nickel and my hands begin to grow. Oh my God. By the way, someone needs to get all these people screened for cancer. Because you know what they say, if your hand is bigger than Never mind. People used to think that this is what dystopia was gonna look like. <laughs> no. Make no mistake, we live in one. It's just a whole lot more boring. Another area where this loss of character is extremely evident is in fashion. I mean, believe me, I love buying $900 hoodies just as much as the next guy. But guys, can we at least use different fonts for this shit? Isn't the fashion industry supposed to be about like runway shows and showing off with this flashy, glitzy shit? You know, setting trends for years to come? Then why the fuck did they all change their logo to the default Microsoft Word font? This is Arial, bro. This is Arial. Burberry. Saint Laurent. I don't even want to say this shit. Bald man. At least other companies will throw like some color into the text for their own limp dick redesigns. These are literally the exact same. And then what really gets to me. Oh my God, I feel like I'm about to faint, dude. What really gets me is that these guys will then like turn around and pretend like all these redesigns are like the most genius thing ever that they put so much thought into. This is an actual quote from a design firm about the Burberry logo change. Mind you, they changed it to Ariel Bold. What we like, the black lettering on white background is sleek and sophisticated, just like the brand. Am I going crazy? Are my neurons not firing anymore? This is the fucking default. How are you trying to say that black text on white background is, is, is sophisticated? What kind of design firm would say some, some shit like this? Like, who are these people that... 
Oh! Oh! Ah! 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 I get it now. No, I get it now. I get it now. I get it now. <laughs> does end there though because these days every company feels like they need some holier than thou shtick to justify what they're doing with their logo animal planet went from this to this to this and apparently their justification was that turning the elephant to the right symbolized forward motion and progress flipping the elephant was was a big thing and this one you probably noticed the new m&m's logo right it's all over the news everyone was talking about it these brave souls they rotated it five degrees isn't that crazy and I'm not kidding you. The purpose of the redesign was to symbolize togetherness because of the ampersand between the M's. Kill me. Someone come to my house and kill me in Grand Theft Auto. The ampersand was already there. You didn't change. You rotated it. It's not that deep. Just say you wanted to rotate it. This shit is like, it's like gravitational field of Pepsi levels of circle jerk. It means nothing. It only gets worse. Watch this one. This is a really funny video. I want you to watch it real quick. A standing ovation for a fucking, a less recognizable staple. I have been unbelievably negative in this video. So let me show you something that I actually like. Chobani. This redesign was actually genius on so many levels. Chobani needed to set themselves apart in the health food category. I don't know, I think they make yogurt. I don't think I've ever eaten yogurt in my entire life, but either way, their, their way of doing it was to ditch the unfriendly sans serif and the blinding white packaging that all their yogurt was in and embrace a down-to-earth natural look. The text is playful, it's friendly, it's creamy somehow, and the packaging is perfect. Isn't it crazy that despite not changing a single thing about the actual product, all of a sudden it looks like environmentally friendly? and healthier. That is what it's about. And I think that's what more companies need to do. I got a couple more companies on my mind. Let's do some rapid fire. Airbnb's redesign fell into line with the bland, lifeless font. And I guess the icon is also kind of accurate because every time you rent an Airbnb, you kind of do spread your cheeks and let the host fuck you with a $500 cleaning fee and a, they basically give you a part-time job. I've had more nightmare experiences with Airbnb than I've had decent ones, but that is a video for another time. Roblox got less and less cool over time, and the last time around, they just made the hole bigger, so hey, I guess we're all getting fucked these days. <laughs> I think this one was the best one, the one with a little bit of red, still had a little bit of character to it. Every evolution of the Minecraft logo has gotten less sophisticated and more boring, kind of like the game's audience over the years. I get why YouTube switched their logo around to put a bigger emphasis on the icon with like the play button in it, I just wish they didn't. <laughs> just felt right like this, you know? Feels like every change YouTube makes to the site, I'm just a little bit disappointed in. I just want to rate shit out of five stars again. And am I the only one that does not like the Popeyes redesign one bit? Where's the color? Why do you ditch the red border like that? I don't know, this one just kind of lost all the charm it had. If I was going to do it, I'd keep the original border and I'd swap out the P maybe for the rooster in the new one. That's what they should have done. E3's redesign sucked so bad they canceled the entire convention. And then I'm pretty sure the only reason Sprite changed their logo and bottle was is that so people would stop recognizing the bottle in mountains of trash and pollution? <laughs> Look, I've been very angry today. I apologize. This is just how I am sometimes. But if there's a moral to today's story, it's that the world is becoming bland and lifeless, and there's no silver lining to any of it. I used to have an app on my dad's phone that was a logo quiz when I was a kid, where they'd remove all the text on the logos, and you just had to kind of guess what the company was based on the, the, the other recognizable characteristics of it. And I think that's what got me into this stuff in the first place. Like I said, I don't know shit about design. I didn't go to school for it. I dropped out of school. But it is something that plays such an integral role in all of our lives. And I can't help but want things to look good and to feel inspired. That's the end of my rant. Here's some logos I really like and I hope will never change because of just how iconic and classic they are. And if there's one thing I want to leave you with, it's this. Limited time flavor. Lay's wavy. Funyuns, onion-flavored, Funyuns, onion-flavored rings. Goodbye.